Welcome back to the show, and I'm so happy you're here continuing on in our series on viral visibility. So if you've been listening to these episodes, watching these episodes along with us and doing the work in the viral visibility roadmap, I'm excited to come at this from a little bit different angle. If you're listening and tuning into this while it's coming out, we are in the middle of the Summer Olympics, and I'm really inspired after a weekend of watching incredible athletes from all over the world in a variety of sports, many of which we never watch at any other time besides every four years when we get to see things like archery, even swimming, rowing, um, things that are just typically not televised at our major sporting events. And what struck me because we're in the middle of the season and because we're obsessed at Thought Leader Academy right now with helping our amazing leaders 10X their visibility between now and the end of the year, which I hope that you are joining us in and doing alongside um, with the, inside this community. What struck me so much was the importance of visibility on, on an entirely new level. So here's what I mean. There were two experiences I had this weekend in very different ends of the visibility spectrum that brought home to me the importance of the work that you are doing and showing up here as part of being part of this, this rise in visibility. And I want to talk about both of them today. And we'll do a little show and tell because the second one, I'm actually going to show you a clip of something that um, that was that was really a, a piece of the second one. So the first happened when I was watching the men's basketball. So this is the best, you know, basketball players in the U.S. coming together, creating the dream team. And I grew up in the area era. I live in Chicago now. And when I came out to go to university in the Chicago area, uh, that was when the Bulls had the original, what's called the dream team, Michael Jordan and Dennis Rodman and um, Scottie Pippen. And it was this, you know, really exciting time. And I'm not a huge, huge basketball fan, but I certainly, you know, respect. And it was, it, it sort of took the city by storm. Everyone was obsessed with going to the Bulls games. And, um, you know, Michael Jordan was, you know, has is considered um, until recently as the GOAT, the greatest of all time. And so I really like came, you know, into this area during that team. And certainly when they started letting professional athletes go to the Olympics, um, where we were talking about, you know, um, a whole new level of play, right? These are the professionals best in the world, you know, NBA guys, and they created that gold medal team. So let's go to this year, which we're recording this in 2024 and look at the new dream team that's been assembled. And we have the players that my son, who is now 13 idolizes. Um, and I have not been as aware of just because whatever, it's just not where I've been putting my attention. So I'm watching the Olympics coverage and there's an interview with LeBron James. Okay. Now again, my 13 year old son would be horrified. I'd only heard of LeBron James because he wanted the LeBron shoes. And, um, I told him they were too expensive or something like that. Right. Um, or that he could create the money for those if he wants them, but you know, whatever. So I've heard of this man's name. I've heard of Steph Curry. I've heard of Durant. Like I've heard of some of these, these players, but I haven't watched them. I know nothing about them. That's my own ignorance. This is a person LeBron, who is considered now to be the greatest of all time. He's 39, almost 40 years old. He is still playing. He's playing with his son on the Lakers. He's leading the American hopeful Olympic gold medal team in France, in Paris. And I am a person who like, where have I been? What rock have I been under? Like, I don't know a lot about this man. And he's does this short interview, which is what visibility he would think I'm sure. And most of the world would think this man does not need any more visibility. He has shoe lines. He is famous. He has mega, mega, I don't know if he has billions of dollars, but he certainly has many, many, many millions of dollars. What, who doesn't know if you're, if you're in the Western world and you have heard of anything LeBron, right? And yet he was willing to do this interview. It's a visibility opportunity to get in front of a new audience. This is what we are talking about in the entire visibility series. You preaching to your choir is no longer going to get you what you need in terms of visibility in 2024. He was willing to do an interview that was going to reach a new audience. People like me who aren't his maybe main demographic, not big, you know, necessarily like NBA fans haven't paid attention to that particular sport, but I'm watching the Olympics because I love some of the other sports that 
that they cover and find the stories really inspiring. He's in front of a new audience. And this is what you want to be thinking about every single week for moving forward. What new audience am I going to get in front of this week? LeBron, who seemingly would need no new audiences, got in front of a new audience. And I will tell you, I will be donating to this man's charities. I was inspired. I cried. I will explain why he has put... um, this is even for for decades, like um, incredible numbers of of kids through college that wouldn't have been able to go to college otherwise. He has this long time, you know, marriage to someone he's been married to for decades. He has, you know, the raising his children, and he. This is this is what it was. The interviewer said, "What kind of game are you leaving? Like you're almost forty, you know, in basketball. That's old, sad. Um, I'm over forty, so it's like we don't want that to be old. But he's he's said, you know, what kind of what kind of legacy? He's basically asking him about his legacy, and he said, "Well, if my legacy is limited to basketball, I haven't done my job. If my legacy is limited to basketball, I haven't done my job." because I'm about what I'm doing in the community, the legacy I'm leading for my fellow human beings on this planet, the good that I can do with the platform, the visibility that he's created. And it was super powerful because this guy's up to a bigger game and you're up to a bigger game. And to be in that bigger game, he is willing to take time out of his day and become more visible, which included, you know, this, this televised interview as part of the Olympics coverage. He reached me and maybe many other people who just don't follow basketball and don't know a lot about him besides that he's famous and really good. And now he has attracted more people to his movement of putting kids through college and education and support and community involvement and being a great parent and being a great leader. It is a whole nother game, as he said, that he's playing. And I got fired up and inspired and motivated and moved because then what they talked about is, you know, what does it take? What does it take to be the greatest of all time? And he just kept it really real and really grounded. He said, here's the deal. Are you willing to do the work? greatness. There's no shortcut to greatness. There's no shortcut to visibility either. He just over and over and over did the reps. We talk about in thought leader, reps equals revenue, reps equals visibility, reps of saying what new audience, even if it's four more people, am I going to get in front of this week? Do I have a friend that has four people on Facebook? I'm going to go do a live with that person and I'm going to be visible with that person. And I'm going to reach more people this week. This is what it is about in viral visibility. It's not super sexy, not super glamorous all the time. He didn't start by being interviewed at the Olympics, leading the gold medal team. That was decades of doing the reps, throwing the free shots, being nice to people on the corner, being nice to people at school. You know, he didn't even get to go to college himself. And look at the legacy he's creating. All right. So that was part one. You have someone who's already uber, uber famous, considered the best in the world in a sport that many, many millions of people know about. And he reached a new audience. And it's going to help him fulfill a greater legacy in his movement because people that didn't know a lot about his other work and his legacy can get involved and contribute and be part of it and be part of that beautiful ripple effect of positivity. So that was number one visibility. What new audience are you getting in front of? Number two, on the whole other end, a sport many people know nothing about is women's rugby. Women's rugby. Okay. So I'm going to show you a clip in a minute of the, you know, big, you know, powerhouse women's rugby player that's competed in Tokyo Olympics and is now back for the Paris Olympics. And this incredible woman is using visibility to do profound work that again is bigger than her craft. So if your craft is writing, you get to be bigger than just writing or speaking or your, you know, uh, health uh, coaching or your relationship coaching, your financial advising, whatever it is, there's a bigger game that you're here to play. So here's someone who doesn't have a shoe line, doesn't have millions of fans, doesn't make billions of dollars, very different end of the spectrum. Let's check this out and see what inspires you here. The 2021 her first Olympics in Tokyo. What's it feel like when you just get to say the sentence, I'm an Olympian? 
I love it. I try to use it to get myself free things. <laughs> I wear the rings proudly because I worked very hard for it. And I don't think we should diminish how hard we work. I'm here at the Tokyo Olympics and I'm going to test out the cardboard beds for y'all. You can understand why she became the toast of TikTok. Look at me. Look at the way I'm rocking this. Sharing unvarnished takes on life in the Olympic Village. I don't know what Olympic TikTok has done to you, but I'll hyped for women's rugby sevens this year. Doing it again in Paris. A little crazy to use my perfect body type as the mannequin. I knew that if I kept this up, got people watching me on TikTok, they'd also tune into my sport. She's since racked up a million plus followers and often uses her massive platform to empower women. I have cellulite everywhere. It is completely normal. Sharing Sorry. deeply vulnerable moments. And remember, your body is perfect. Big, small, tall, short. Whatever body you're in, that's the body of a woman. I didn't really see a lot of my body type in media. I'm a very big, muscular woman. I just want to keep doing it for them, for the girls who message me like, oh, you've made me feel so good about myself. She's got quite a fan club at home, too. It's an overwhelming feeling of pride. If I'm having a conversation with a new person, I'm like, all right, how soon can I bring up that my sister is going to be Above all, that pride is what drives Alona Mar. I want to continue to make. All right. So Alona Mar, what an awesome. So this is someone who didn't have the big platform made time. She just starts going on TikTok and putting out a sport. No one knows, very few, I should say no one. Many people don't know about men's rugby, even women's rugby. And, and she is there to say, I don't see people like me being visible as the perfect body type. She's like, I'm a bigger woman, a muscular woman. And so she does something about it. She let her visibility grow in a little bit. And now she is at the Olympics with a bigger platform and being interviewed by these different news stations. So on both ends of the spectrum with Kobe, it was how, even when you think you have all the visibility in the world, there are still people you haven't reached that need to hear what you have to say, that there's no shortcut to greatness, that you've got to be willing to do the reps and the legacy is way bigger than the craft. And what are you going to do? about it and contribute to. And then you have Alona Mart, who is like just in this sport that is more unknown, is, is um, you know, doesn't have this body type of whatever she's seeing out there in terms of even like female athletes. And she says, no, I'm going to be visible. I'm going to put this stuff out there. I'm going to be fun. I'm going to be entertaining. I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to cry. I'm going to show people that they are perfect, that they're beautiful, that they are wanted, that they're valuable, that they matter, whatever shape their container is. And I'm going to show up for that and be visible for that. She didn't have to. She could focus on her rugby. Kobe could, you know, uh, LeBron, I think Kobe, <laughs> another one, um, love him too. Um, could focus on basketball. They already have plenty going on, but they're willing to make visibility a priority. And because of that, lives are changed. Millions now between these two of lives are changed. So that's your homework this week. What new audience are you going to get in front of? Make sure you have the viral visibility roadmap so that you can generate ideas of where to find um, where to find those, those people. And you can grab it in the show notes. You can make sure that you are at our upcoming visibility trainings. And we even will make you a personal visibility plan, your own personal viral visibility plan just for you, customized for you, because are you are you a, um, you know, are you LeBron or are you a, are you LeBron or are you an Alana right now? Right. I mean, we're at different phases and we have different things that feel authentic and different things that resonate with us. So if you're not sure how to be more visible, you don't have any friends that have any social media followings or email lists, then make sure in the show notes, you grab your link and you let us, our team is going to gift this to you as a gift for free so that you get to have a personal viral visibility plan. And you do know how to get in front of at least one new audience every single week. That's how you're going to 10X your visibility, 10X your income, and 10X your impact on the world. I'll see you next time.